Hey guys, I wanted to introduce you back to Slithers, guys. Um, yes, it is daytime. I hate getting him up. Um, he loves to come out at night. That's when he, really when he's really active. Um, but he's up right now uh, for the video. I absolutely love this snake. Um, having a green tree python was my wife's and mine, you know, that was kind of like our dream snake. You know, we all have like snakes that we want. And he is one that we've always wanted. You know, it is a cool snake. Um, as you can see, he's like right here by my face. I don't think that he's ever going to strike at my face. Um, doesn't mean that he never will. But he is very, very calm, especially for a biak. Now, a lot of times people get the arus, they get the different ones, um, and they're really, really uh, docile. But the biaks are known for being, well, I would say aggressive but extremely defensive. Um, that's kind of what they are. They're just a little bit of a different snake. Now Slithers, as far as my experience has been, nah, it's not been him. I mean, I have been tagged a few times, um, especially when we first got him. Uh, he had mites and doing the treatment for the mites, that really made him a little bit, um, at first, more defensive. But I think that's really what ended up getting us, you know, on the same page as far as building a bond. Because after we did the treatment, he actually spent every day getting the treatment, getting hands on, um, and realizing that we're not going to hurt him, that we're here to help him. And ever since then, we have had a special bond. Um, so, yes, there, if he does decide to bite, it is a little bit uh, painful. It's not bad, but... You definitely feel it more than you do with like a ball python or something. Um, they do have very long teeth. But I tell you, this snake here, I, people have this, uh, y'all know why right? he always wants to cover my mouth. They have this theory that these these snakes here, these you know green trees are so mean and that they're they're always going to bite. And that's not the case. I've been able to take this snake out uh, you know, when we go to the vets or when we go somewhere. And our vet is just like, he is super docile. They, he doesn't even question it anymore. Um, when he first saw him the very first time, he's just like, I can't believe how easy going this snake is. Um, he's just, he's looking at the other snakes right now. I, I have a feeling he's up there. I can kind of see what he's doing in the background because we have the other snakes behind us. Um, as you saw, Dora's cage. So he doesn't really ever get to interact with any of these other snakes, but you know, he is a very inquisitive snake for a green tree python. Um, the biggest downfall I will tell people if they are looking at owning a green tree python is yeah, they're not snakes that you're probably gonna handle every single day. Um, matter of fact, I handle him maybe once a week, maybe, you know, twice, a week if it's really a week that I can spend a lot of time with him um, just to get him out just to you know always you know have that hands-on so this way they are always docile um, but if there are moments that he doesn't want to come out he will tell you he will let you know hey look not today this is not the day I want to come out and okay well you read their language you understand that he may tell you he's not in the mood then just don't get him out um, but far as everyone else's videos I've seen on YouTube, and they're like, oh, mine is so aggressive, oh, mine's so defensive, you know, I can't really handle them. They have to pull the perch out with them. They don't get much of the hands-on experience. Um, this snake here, yeah, I can do anything. If I want to touch his head, I touch his head. If I want to touch anything, open his mouth, I can open his mouth. Um, we do have a special bond that I'm very appreciative of because just like the... The carpet pythons, people say that they're very nippy, especially as juveniles, and they kind of mature out of it. Uh, green trees, not so much. Green trees are notorious for being defensive 24-7, uh, especially the bee accent. This one here isn't. I mean, he is super sweet. I'm very, very blessed to have him. Um, but if you are looking to buy one, just understand they're not really beginner snakes. Um, you know, just like any pythons, they can go off a of feed. Uh, you want to make sure you have a good warm spot and a cool spot so they can regulate their body temperature. 
Um, and his cage is a very large cage we have made by Focus Cube. Um, you know, he, it was designed for him uh, through Steven with Focus Cube. Uh, it's definitely a larger cage, probably one of the largest cages that's actually done for a green tree python, for a single green tree python at that. Uh, but this snake here is absolutely amazing. Uh, so upfront costs, they're about maybe four or $500 right now. Um, far as their enclosure, his enclosure being shipped from Texas to Florida, I think it was nearly $2,000. Um, so that was the biggest cost. And then getting the, the, um, the herb stat was expensive. That was, you know, another $400, I think, or $300 for that. And getting the heating panels and all that stuff, that is what the cost is. That's what's cost so much uh, with these snakes um, is all the extra. The snakes themselves isn't always that expensive, but it's giving them the right habitat. Um, going down and buying driftwood, right? Getting something that they're accustomed to in the wild. So let's go ahead and just like with Dora, you saw her enclosure, let's go ahead and take a look at Slither's enclosure. This is his enclosure. Um, as you can see, we can see his temperatures down there. Uh, it's bioactive. Um, so it is really, really a large cage for a green tree python. Um, you know, he has his misters and everything inside there as well. Uh, but yeah, this, this cage is quite large for a green tree python. But let's go ahead and just take a look at Slithers inside his cage. If I'm able to get him off the hat. Like I said, once he's on, he is on. And he is absolutely amazing. So let me just go here and put him back in his cage. So normally he will go to the bottom, uh, kind of where the wood area is. You're going to see him go in there. So I'm gonna put him on top, but you can kind of see what he ends up doing. Um, just like Dora, he likes to come out. Once he's out, he wants to always be out with you. Um, that's one of the cool things about him is he likes to explore too. Uh, but you can kind of see, you know, he has his different purchases, but he will very quickly start going down to the second uh, level um, and then where the driftwood is that's normally where he will actually stay um, normally he doesn't like it at the top that's the hottest area of the cage so normally he he likes to go just a little bit uh, more towards the bottom of the cage there uh, I left the door open uh, I think that could be one of the reasons why he is thinking, is he coming back out or is he is he staying in? Um, so he's kind of thinking what's going on here. But he is a very uh, big green tree python um this cage here is i think it's three feet uh by four feet tall and three feet deep um, so it's a very large cage for him um, there you go you can start seeing him start moving around a little bit more um, he's going to go most likely to the back of the uh, cage and down to the driftwood um, that's typically what he does and that's just exactly what he's doing now. So you can kind of see that's exactly where he's going. And you got once you own these snakes, you kind of realize, you know, their personalities. Um, you know, what each snake does. Each snake is a little bit different. Um, you know, again, I do have the um, door open, which normally he doesn't have open. Um, you know, once he goes back in the cage, uh, just because he is a very curious, uh, green tree python. Um, but 
he is going down to his area that he normally goes to. This is very normal for him. Um, you know, that's why I knew exactly what he would be doing because that's exactly what he does. And there he goes to the driftwood. Uh, that, that part of the driftwood is where he loves to stay. That's where he wraps himself up. Um, like I said, he is a very curious green tree python. Uh, very, very cool snake. Um, you know, absolutely uh, awesome seeing how he is. Um, and sometimes he will even go down even further uh, into the driftwood. Um, if he's really in the mood to roam, he, he'll go to the very bottom and roam the bottom and climb back up. Uh, but it looks like he's getting comfortable. Looks like he's going to be wrapping himself into his normal position onto the driftwood. Um, he's, he's, he's just a really, it's just really cool to seeing him um, do what he does, you know, constantly. I'm, so, I'm trying to focus this in, guys, so I do apologize. Let me see if I can get this over here so you can see him. Uh, see exactly what he's doing there. It takes him some time, sometimes. Sometimes he goes pretty quick. Sometimes it's a slower movement. Today is a slower movement to get into the driftwood. Uh, but naturally he is going to end up there and that's where he's going to spend the rest of the day um, right there he's slowly slowly uh, positioning himself on the driftwood and plus the room is a little cold right now uh, his cage is 84.9 and dropping because the door is uh, open. So naturally, once he gets comfortable, I'll close the door and let the temperature get back up to his 87 degrees. Um, but you can see it's regulated at, at the very bottom, uh, 80 degrees. Very top is 84 degrees. So you have a nice area for him to really find uh, his comfort zone. If he wants to be cold, he can go down. If he wants to be hot, he can go up. But there he is. He's getting on his driftwood, getting comfortable, and then he's going to sleep. Well, guys, thanks for watching this video as always. God bless and take care.